What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and more Birthright content as we're working our way to the last few realms here in the Brecht area. And today we're going to take a look at Gravis Mule, uh, which is neutral good and recommended for PCs to use. It is a frontier realm and we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. So you do have a fair few provinces, most of them kind of in the lower level of the twos and threes. Well, you do have a fair few fours and then also a five and a six. So not necessarily as frontier as uh, we might think. That being said, as you can see, the law is split. Uh, we've got multiple temple uh, holdings going on, guild activity split as well, and then uh, sources. So there's just a lot going on here, and it's not necessarily a unified realm. So in that sense, a little bit more frontier still. So two regents rule the law in Gravis Mule. Unfortunately, one of them is Seamus Karlberger, uh, just a level one fighter, although 40 on his bloodline. So um, a lot of potential there for that character, potentially. Uh, to uh, to grow in level and power. Uh, consider the Duke of Gravis Mule. He's the Lord of the Zvilans and Scourge of the Black Ice Bay. Now, Gravis Mule has been cursed since the end of the Anwarian occupation with incompetent, greedy, and or disinterested rulers, and he's kind of all three in one go. The other ruler, Colin Pick uh, Biter, uh, is a uh, male dwarf, level 7, uh, king of the Dikar, Zigun Dwarves, also has a little bit of the law here in um, provinces nearest to his realm. Now the temple side, temples devoted to the three deities are represented in the realm, uh, or three of the deities, I should say. The humans who subscribe to the religion uh, uh, of some sort follow Ruornil generally, and members of Ruornil's Silver Guard maintain battle readiness at all times or contribute to the support of those able to fight. They also support the Gravis Mill Guard, a band of rangers um, famed throughout Brechtur's history. This temple is currently led by the half-elf Luther Helmsen, uh, so we've got a ranger of five and priest five actually there, and an okay bloodline. Dwarves who live or work in the realm follow the teachings of Moradin, of course. Uh, Morathos Everdark leads those, uh, and the, the temple there is called Bright Embers Darkness. And then finally, the gnolls who cross the mountains to make a camp and plague the scattered domains worship the dark god of Yenogu. And then the guilds, we have the Black Ice Traders, employ ruthlessness and cunning by slipping into Daikar Zigun and Western Gravis Mill, cutting lumber and selling it back to the dwarves at a steep price. And then we also have the Deep Steel Miners, can hold their own against the Black Ice Traders. Their iron ore, coke, and copper are smelted to make fine weapons that the warriors of the realm need to hold off incursions from the gnolls. So a lot of potential there for creating sort of a faction war, faction conflict, which Again, the DM could uh, play up with several quest lines and things like that to tip the balances into one side or the other, depending on what the players are going for. But that could also lead to a little bit of at least trade stability, um, if nothing else. Although you'd be pushing it certainly towards the dwarves, and if we, we don't have dwarves in the party, especially in the setting, um, it might be hard to, uh, to gain their trust and loyalty, but taking out some of the black ice traders certainly would be a start for that. Sources, we have Colin uh, Schaefpate, um, level 8 wizard, uh, good bloodline there as well. Uh, seldom leaves the Zvilans, but he has a network of sources and ley lines in Gravis Mill, and we'll get to him in that uh, realm's entry itself. Kalyan Lulin, uh, minor bloodline, uh, lawful neutral, um, does control several uh, inland sources. The two mages have been known to clash at different times, so now that being said, get a level 8 wizard versus a level 5 there, so... Now, stat-wise here, we have a decent amount of Regency. You got 35 generated, 45 accumulated treasury of 22 gold bars, uh, which is just fine. Um, not as large as some of the other Brecht realms we've seen, but um, it's, it's workable, certainly. And then we do have the forces here. Uh, we got three units of infantry, two of archers, solid core there, and then a minuscule navy, one round ship, and two keelboats. So certainly a goal would be to shore up the forces a little bit just to be able to tackle some of the other um, ongoing issues of the realm. But at the same time, we got to really take more control of the law of the land somehow and then also um, bump up the uh, economy. So. The human temples and guilds have always been allowed to have their own forces, at least in living memory. So that's why we have Rurinal Silver Guard. They can muster three levies on demand, as well as a special um, scout unit of rangers known as the Gravis Mule Guard. Um, so we have a little bit more, although, again, just a larger standing force of quality troops would be better. The Black Eyes Traders themselves do have three keelboats and a round ship, plus two marine units. The dwarves of Daikar Zigun uh, help defend the realm against the gnolls. 
thereby also protecting their own interests. So they have a very, just a solid army of their own, really. Uh, four units of dwarf guards and four of crossbows, which, you know, if we compare that, I think all the way back with like the Baruch Azik uh, army itself is basically, you know, comparable to that realm. And this is just their extra contribution here. Since the Knolls must summon all their forces out of the Knoll Fells and move them through Hjorig, they know better than to brave the passes of Daikar, Daikar Zigun. They can muster only one unit of Knoll Marauders when needed. So, limited reinforcements for them there. Now, the Regent. Um, so, we got Seamus Kahlberger is the selfish, immature Regent of Gravis Mill, though his influence hardly extends beyond the capital of Daugren um, and the northern inlet settlements around Tree. Um, Trier. Uh, no heirs to the dunk, uh, dukedom currently exist, nor are any likely. It is said Seamus has no taste for the idea of marriage or children. So there's what you have to work with if you want to follow the uh, at least the initial character. Certainly, this could be a ripe uh, domain for someone to come into a bloodline or a character, an NP, or not an NPC, but a, a PC with a bloodline maybe that were adventuring in the realm and somehow you know take over, take control of the realm, and then try to rule it. That could be an interesting quest too. Let's get into the other NPCs here. Uh, a little bit more on Seamus first, though. Seamus is a fool of a regent who may become a um, regent of nothing if uh, Gravas Resketch, who is a level f 2 fighter, level 7 thief, neutral evil, though, has anything to say about it. Um, he once sailed with the pirates of Grabentoad and learned... Um, uh, sorry, Gravas once learned uh, with the pirates of Grabentoad, and she uh, learned her trade as a reaver. Now she frequents the court of Grievous Mill, uh, looking for a chance to dispose of Seamus and seize control. She is attempting to enlist the aid of Arlinda Aldor, who's a level 9 thief, pretty potent, minor bloodline too, uh, of the Black Ice traders. So we have certainly internal conflict. Arlinda may have her own designs on the throne of Grievous Mill, though. She originated in the logging camp of Rulsveg, where she learned um, uh, to fight, with, uh, fight the dwarves and gnolls as soon as she could hold an axe. Now she cuts trees out of Daikar Zigun, gouging the doors with her high lumber prices. So all kinds of internal conflicts, multi-sided too. However, Colin Pickbiter and his dwarf lords, um, Morathos Everdark and Doran Utterland, may not stand for this poaching any longer. Colin works on Seamus every day to outlaw this practice, while Morathos, the high priest of Bright Ember's Darkness, is beginning to inject a little xenophobia into his sermons. Doran, the guildmaster of the Deep Steel Miners, is the only dwarf who doesn't really care about Arlinda's price gouging. It justifies the exorbitant prices um, she charges for the ore and the tools out of the mountains uh, in return. As Doran says, wood is a luxury but steel and coal fuel Gravis Mill and keep the gnolls at bay. So, again, lots of intersecting uh, goals and conflicts here. The gnolls' presence in Gravis Mill is significant enough for them to be represented by the Church of Yenugu's Dark Curse, led by Gus Firescorn, um, or as we should probably repronounce that, Goose or something like that, or Gus. Um, Gus sounds a little too human. <laughs> uh, he was sent to Graves Mill with several null marauders to set up an invasion. Uh, unfortunately, Daikar Zigun and Hyorig blocked the way into Graves Mill, and Gus is growing, or not Gus, gosh, I said it again, uh, Gus, uh, we'll, we'll go with that as a pronunciation, uh, is growing disheartened. So, Gravis Mill's provinces are wild and overgrown, except near the cities of Daugren and Trier. The locals are an independent sort, living in small communities and clannish extended families, more typical of the Moss and Rurig uh, than the Brechts. Still, uh, uh, Gravis Mill's inhospitable climate and appearance keep it from being raided by Graventoad. The mountains that cut it off from the rest of the continent and keep the bad weather in make it an unappealing target for would-be conquerors, really, because there's just not really easy pickings there. The city of Trier, uh, the city is the one bright spot in a dis, uh, dismal realm. Even the decadent Daugren cannot rival Trier for excitement. Grabentoe's raiders, Moodin's Royal Marines, and dwarf and human traders of Gravis Mill come there to forget their differences and take the chill off. The burger of Trier once boasted that a party of gnolls, driven from the mountains by dwarf troops, wandered into the city. Before they knew it, they spent their booty on wine and food and had to take jobs as tavern drugs, uh, drudges um, to pay their debts. Daugren, on the other hand, once a cosmopolitan trading port with every possible luxury, good passing through its docks, um, the city has fallen into decline. Pirates, bandits, gamblers, and every type of ruffian make up its populace, uh, again, due to incompetent uh, leadership and fragmented leadership. Enemies 
there's always some. The gnolls of the fells would like to take over, but they are not a serious threat, um, mainly due to geography, but also the typical issues of infighting. Um, in the past, Reslev has made a few cutlass rattling overtures, but the Royal Marines of Muden would not take kindly to a Voss realm invading any part of Brechtur, so thus far at least. Right? That's something a DM could slowly work in. Maybe they just a little bit more than saber, rat saber rattling and maybe finding a way to encourage or coax the um, the gnolls and maybe support them in other ways. Um, so that could be a interesting little quest line. Finally, some special considerations. Gravis Mule is wild, open, and above all, neutral. It will seldom ally with anyone for a long period of time, though its leaders occasionally choose sides. This is particularly true of the wizard Kalien Lulin, who sees the wildness of the countryside as a waste, even though she, as a source holder, benefits from its lack of development. So we got, again, all kinds of things going on here, and they kind of, I think, did a nice job as far as setting all these conflicts in place. You have the sort of the fragmented uh, leadership, and as far as law and ruling the country goes, you got multiple things going on with the temples, the guilds, and the sources, and they kind of all neatly intersect, creating really this sort of perfect storm of problems. So certainly a great realm to adventure in, a lot of potential any one way. Uh, certainly plenty of factions for the characters to be involved in, whether helping them or um, being in conflict with them. But uh, ruling the realm is definitely a challenge on this one, so no easy path there. Again, you know, a lot of interesting stuff on paper here, not um, by any means an easy path. But um, to, to rule it up certainly would be quite the challenge and figure out how you're going to navigate your neighbors, all the internal conflicts, other people gunning for the throne, and really just a, a way to make the realm uh, more powerful. Certainly you got to have the conflicts dealt with. You need to somehow get a little bit more of the realm under control via law, but you also need a little bit more uh, tax revenue and stuff coming in. So, you know, the economy needs to be worked on um, population somehow attracting people to the realm, uh, among other things. So just lots and lots of challenges, but a fun one nonetheless. Let us know, guys, if you have ruled Gravis Mool or had it in campaigns and how that's all worked out. Be sure to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. Look forward to hearing your stories, and we'll see you for more Birthright.